Amendment application has received a qualified petition signed by 25 signatures or more. One representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. If the petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak on behalf of residents. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not be turned to take part in any debate that may follow. The application will then be opened up to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on the application. <coughs> if a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, then that matter will not be discussed this evening and will be discussed at a, at a subsequent planning meeting. Can I ask members for approval of the minutes on pages 1 to 6? Yes, I'll give you that.
application was subject to a committee site as into our Tuesday. Uh, planning Commission is sought the construction of four petrol pumps to accommodate uh, eight for the meter trees, two in each pump. The pumps will be fully automated, so these will so there will be no kiosk or shop associated with the fuel pumps, with all payments being uh, made automated in full. The proposal will require a reconfiguration of the car park and will result in an effort. Spaces. The pumps would be located in the southeastern corner of the site, close to the main entrance to the overall site um, entrance on the Road. The, the nearest residential property is located on um, Akis Road, which is located some 20 metres from the perimeter of the site. However, the nearest pump would be located some 45 metres away from that property. Given mm -hmm. these distances and the conclusions of the noise impact assessment submitted for the application, it's considered that the proposal is not our residential community. The proposal is also unlikely to result in significant traffic generation that would give rise to any highway safety issues. The reduction in car parking spaces could also be accommodated without resulting in any detrimental impacts to existing operations on site or to the adjacent highway network. The proposal will not increase retail activity at the site and there will be no kiosk on site and everything will be automated. The proposal is considered to be Especially in the sense of monstrous staff, but it's also more than suspiciously within the store. 
the staff response and emergency staff association. I would also like to read the following quotes from the Red Guide, uh, which, is, which is published by the Federal Patrol and Enforcement Liaison Group, which I found via the Health and Safety Executive website. And the, the title, the full title of the document is a Petrol Cover Stations Guide for Managing the Risks of Fire and Explosion. And this is in relation to access to the national site for tankers and deliveries. The first one says, it is important to handle this if these are the left cars from the sky. It is important that the driver can move the tanker onto and around the site as easily as possible. The likelihood of illnesses increases if the driver has to make difficult maneuvers or drive close to close obstacles or other vehicles. Two, try and provide to maintain a clear and objective entry and exit routes at all times. But this is not possible to ensure that the route is clear when the tanker enters or leaves the site. In the event of a fire, the tanker needs to be able to leave the site quickly and safely. I trust that those members in the site will share my concerns regarding the design and position of the proposed motor station. Now, this application complies with any of the important double points. Next, the Federal Patrol Liaison Group Group Liaison 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 Group Liaison
example, they have a system, as many of you will know, at the Tesco Bidston Moss petrol station, where you punch your card in, you can load up to £99 worth of fuel, and you punch your, you, you get the authorization for the card first, as I assume this will be, then you fill your card up with whatever you want, and you pay for the amount you've actually used. But in the last two weeks, I have seen, uh, it's two actually now, but another one yesterday, wagons turning up with large 20-gallon plastic containers and loading up two of them, putting them in the back of the car and driving off with it. And there was no attempt by anybody in the adjacent uh, service facility to stop them doing it. Now, I think that's appalling. And I don't know whether the environment obviously came has got some concerns on that, but having been involved in the construction industry for many years, I know how appalling a petrol fire can be and how quickly it can arise just by somebody being inadvertently careless. And I'm, I'm concerned from both aspects, really, from the health and safety point and from the traffic point of view. So I will definitely be voting against this particular approval. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, thank you, and through for you, Chair. Um, following the site visit um, over the week, uh, I did see the inquiries about the, uh, the safety precautions and the licensing arrangements. So I have made some further inquiries. Um, the red line that um, the Council was going to refer to is the red
taxi, as we all know, is a very busy road and it's a very busy junction and it is subject to congestion. And what really concerned me when I read the officer's report was the, the figures from the applicant about the, the maximum demand that their car park would increase as a result of this um, application would increase from 84% to 98%. And at peak times, the number of spare car parking spaces would reduce to just six. Okay, so we're moving from a situation where there's a fairly comfortable excess capacity of car parking spaces to one where there's virtually none at peak times. And it's not difficult to imagine, I think, you know, a situation where there's a, you know, if there's a, a run on petrol, if there's a run on milk, if there's a big sale of Asda, where you go well over that 98% figure. So I'm very queasy about this in the sense that the, not just the pressure it puts on the, the junction itself, the point has already been made, people will pop in here to fill up before they go to the motor, so it will generate extra traffic at the junction. I'm also very concerned about the safety within the car parks we start to um, go over this 98% this figure and run into a situation where there's excess traffic within the car park. We all know what tricky places car parks can be as well. And you know, the fact that this is unmanned, I think, just heightens my concern about it. And I also, you know, I'll definitely be voting against, I do have wording to support a refusal of the application, which I'm happy to bring forward. And once others have their say. Thanks, Pat. Steve? Well, yeah, I mean, I had similar concerns on site visits. We have the highway engineer who we sort of interrogated on the site and um, I asked are, are there any special measures being put together to, to cope with this <coughs> and the general content, the general opinion was just paraphrasing was that it would be something extra that the store offers to maintain its current success uh, and, and market. So my view is in planning terms do we look at these type of superstores and what do we expect to see? Well, quite occasionally, I can name at least three off the top of my head, where there's a superstore and adjacent or, or part of the, the complex is a petrol station. I don't think it's for us as a planning committee, I don't think there's a planning rule about staff or unstaff purposes that, that, that would, 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 would suit that. Um, and there are other authorities that would look out for the safety aspect. So do we expect on that sort of site large superstore size, it to be able to offer its customers the, the petrol. Um, in terms of location and distance from premises, I was brought up in, in the old days where there was a petrol station at every five yards, and it was literally cheap by jowl to, to houses up in the modern park up north, that's like a car show and, uh, you know, that, that, was the, that, that was the way it was. Now, petrol stations are now uh, tend to be sort of the, these types. So, I'm trying to get Think of it from the aspect of what else would it bring? Well, it would be, certainly bring security to that site if they're going to invest in a petrol station on the site and a jobs on that site. I mean, there's extremely competitive markets, you know, competition is not a planned issue, but job creation and the uh, ability to maintain jobs is certainly an aspect. So, I, at the moment, unless I haven't heard any news from the from refusal, I'm going to take the word of the engineer that the, 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 the traffic can be coped with. I'm going to take the word of the fire authority who are saying it can be run safely with, 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 without danger. Um, and I'm going to probably, unless someone gives really good reasons that can change my mind, support what is a successful business and is a very good supplier of local employees. So, so I'm mindful in planning terms to see very, very, very difficult reasons for objection. I'm, I've heard this from the two main authorities that are, are in charge of the main concerns of, 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 the, um, of the people who are speaking against, if that helps. Thanks, Steve. Joe? Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm mindful to repeat the day of the day of the council I use that word quite a lot. Uh, I think we've seen the implications of the traffic um, when we were there, actually, and that was supposedly a quiet day. To lose 44 parking, parking spaces in there would be horrendous. Um, I've been in that, I've used that shop quite a few times. Um, at the moment, I'm sorry, I can't agree. I totally agree with Dave. I hope you support on this. And I'd like to hear what, what Councillor Cleary put the proposal on the table. I'd like to hear what that is. Okay, I've got two more people that I'd like to speak first. So if we can go to Lady first, and I'll take them. Thank you, Chair. Could you tell me exactly where the exit and entrance is to, to the, the car park? I, I'm a little bit worried. I was on the site visit. And if there's only one exit, one entrance, how do you vacate if there's a big fire? And I'm just worried that the exit is very close to the petrol station itself. Okay, 
access, exit, petrol station, or the petrol filling pumps would be here. Um, so anybody wanting to use the petrol pumps would, would come in here and use the pumps and then leave. So exit and exit.
obviously that adding to the amount of congestion that's already there. I don't know whether engineers can look at some of the rules that are currently taking place to see whether there's anything that can be done in terms of complementing the slip lane to the uh, slip over rules. But uh, uh, I can't see that being linked to this particular part.
alternative uses which should be treated on their tax merits, having regard to market signals and the need to provide different uses that would support sustainable communities. There are arguments for retaining and protecting this site for employment uses, which include its location and proximity um, to the A41 and an existing shortfall of available service and development land within the borough. As such, the proposals have been considered having regard to the development plan location and considered what weight can be given to other material considerations that would support releasing this land for an alternative use. The site has been marketed for employment uses on a two let, may sell, and for sale basis since the site was vacated in 2014 by the Royal Community Trust. There's been no market interest in taking up this site for employment uses within use classes B1, B2, or B8, which cover light and, light and general industrial uses as well as storage and distribution. Even where grant funding could be secured, no interest has come forward uh, during the marketing of the site for primary industrial use. Interest has, however, been shown for retail and/or leisure uses, such as a 